Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Umun Thai. I hope you all have been keeping safe. If you are new on this channel, you can click the link down below to know what this channel is all about. It's an introductory video. Today's video is going to be a story time about how my parents found out I have a sickle cell condition. But before I get into the story, I would like to give a brief introduction onto what sickle cell means. So I'm going to be giving a very simple definition of sickle cell. Sickle cell anemia is a genetic disease of the red blood cells in which there are not enough healthy red blood cells to carry oxygen throughout the body. However, with this condition, the herbaceous have an abnormal crescent shape resembling a sickle. This makes them sticky and rigid and prone to getting trapped in small vessels, which blocks blood from reaching different parts of the body. This can cause pain and tissue damage. The diagram above explains what sickle cell means. Now, what are the symptoms of sickle cell anemia? The symptoms include, but are not limited to, excessive fatigue or irritability from anemia, coarseness in babies, jaundice, which is yellowing of the eyes and skin, swelling and pain in hands and feet, frequent infections, vision problems caused by tissue damage, delayed growth or puberty now types of sickle cell hemoglobin is a protein in red blood cell that carries oxygen it normally has two alpha chains and two beta chains the four main types of sickle cell anemia are caused by different mutations in this chain so hemoglobin ss disease is the first one hemoglobin sc disease is the second one Hemoglobin SB plus beta thalassemia and hemoglobin SB0 beta 0 thalassemia. Other types are hemoglobin SD, hemoglobin SE, hemoglobin SO. These types of sickle cell disease are more rare and usually don't have severe symptoms. So it is important you know the type of sickle cell disease that you have. Because I didn't get to know my actual type until I got to Canada and that explains a lot. Now let's talk about um, people who are at risk of having um, sickle cell anemia. So children are only at risk for sickle cell disease if both parents carry sickle cell traits. People from regions that have endemic malaria are more likely to be carriers and at risk of sickle cell anemia. People who only inherit a mutated gene, hemoglobin S, from one parent are said to have sickle cell traits. They may have those symptoms or reduced symptoms. Now, we know how people get sickle cell. It's not an airborne disease and it's not, it's not um, a disease that can be transferred um, through um, any kind of, through any other means. Yeah, it's a genetic disorder, so you can only get the disease when you have two parents with the mutated hemoglobin S gene. Here comes the gist guys. So, my parents get to know that I have sickle cell condition when I was three yes when i was three years old so logically if you have sickle cell you start to show symptoms from like three months six months upwards but strangely i did not show any kind of symptoms until i was three so my mom told me shortly after my third birthday i became very sick and i had to be hospitalized so, on getting to the hospital, the doctor had to do a series of tests so they can know, actually know what is wrong with me. So, one of the tests they did was the genotype test. So, it came back as SS. So, I had the sickle cell condition, which is the reason why I was sick. So, logically, if you have sickle cell condition, you are supposed to start showing symptoms from when you are. Um, three months, six 
month, nine months old. But strangely, I didn't show any symptoms until I was three and I became sick and had to go to the hospital. So I was really sick and I was anemic, which led to my first blood transfusion. I got my first blood transfusion when I was three. I was anemic to the point that my vein was difficult to locate and the only place they could set the IV was on my leg because that was the only place they could locate a vein. So my mom told me that I was in so much pain but then after the blood transfusion and other medications I started getting better. Now to my parents reaction, getting to know that they have a child with who, who is SS and my mom, she's AS, my dad, hey, hey, how is that possible? So what actually happened was my dad was 100% sure that his genotype is AS. My mom also, she knows that her genotype is AS. But it's not possible for you to have a child with SS when each partner, one is AS and the other is AS. It's not possible. Scientifically, logically, you can't have a child with SS. So now, my dad was wondering what actually happened? What went wrong? We had, we had a lot of questions and he made answers. So, the only logical thing that they could do then was okay, you, my mom, who, who already knows she's AS, had to, okay, even though you know you're AS, you still need to do your genocide. And my dad also was asked to redo his genocide. And that was when the shock came. My dad was actually AS. So the first result he got when he did the genocide was actually, it was actually a mix of some red. So that was how he got the AS. It was actually some red. So when he redid the genocide and the results came back as AS, my dad was my mom told me that he just became very calm like because he was so very sure that his genotype was a then so the most important thing and and the moral of this story is going to be if if you have to do your genotype three in fact five times please do because sometimes mix up will happen my dad had redone the test after losing their first child he would have known that his region type is AS. And here I am today, healthy and still living with the condition. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Please subscribe, like, you can also share my video. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.